Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Fly Together for the Nintendo Switch. Now Fly Together is a real-time puzzle game that is based on a concept that I've seen many times on different mobile platforms. Now the question asks itself, have they done enough to polish up this concept to make it worthy of a Nintendo Switch release and worthy of spending your money on? Well, today we're going to answer that question. Last thing, just before we move on, I do want to thank the developers of the game for the review code. However, I want to let you know that this is not a paid review and a fully independent one. And don't forget that if you like this content and you want to see more, to please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Fly Together can be best described as a real-time puzzle game. You take on the role as an air traffic controller that basically has to land planes at different airports and transport passengers from one airport to another. Now, this is done by basically drawing flight paths from one airport to another based on the color of the passengers that are boarding your different planes. So if you land at a blue airport, you pick up red passengers, you'll then have to fly them to the red airport. One important thing to mention is that as you direct your plane to the other airport, you have to make sure not to intersect with the flight path of the other planes you have on the screen, because if the two planes make contact, well, you'll cause a crash. Now, as I said before, the basic concept and design of this game has probably been seen by a lot of you before in different mobile games. Now the first thing is the control scheme has completely been redesigned and rather than using touch functionality, you can either use your pro controller or you can use a Joy-Con with the motion controls. Now if you're using your pro controller, you'll use the shoulder buttons to basically switch between the different planes on screen and you'll be basically by holding down the A button, drawing a path with your left joystick. If you rather choose to use one of the Joy-Cons in motion control mode, well basically the Joy-Con will be directing your little finger on screen and you'll draw the path by moving the Joy-Con with the motion controls. Ultimately, I tested out both methods of control and they both work pretty well. However, I do have to give the upside to the motion controls and the Joy-Cons. You'll often be able to react quicker and draw your paths more precisely with the Joy-Cons in motion control mode than you ever could with your Pro Controller. One thing, however, that the developers seem to have dropped from the game and that seems like an odd choice is you can't revert back to the original touchscreen mode of which these games were based on. And the Switch is ultimately equipped with a touchscreen. And especially if you're playing alone in one player mode, sometimes you would feel better suited using the touchscreen. So at its base, it's a pretty simple design. And if this is all that there was to the game, I would say it would probably definitely not be worth our time. But they did add in quite a few elements to add extra dimensions to the gameplay. And let's talk about those next. Now, first of all, you'll have different missions to accomplish that you'll see on your title screen. As you accomplish these different missions, you'll be acquiring extra experience. Now, what does this experience lead to? It leads to upgrading your airport level. And as you upgrade to higher airport levels, you'll unlock extra plane designs that you can purchase. And we're not only talking about different aesthetic designs for your planes, there's actually functional differences between the different plane models. Some will fly quicker, some will fly slower, some will carry more passengers at once, some less. Adding a new level of depth and strategy to the gameplay and also giving you a reason to keep playing and progressing throughout the game. Now there are a ton of models of planes to unlock at the point where even at the end of the game some start to feel redundant because the differences between the planes are so minor. But then again I always say that more is better than less in these type of games so you know what I'm not going to fault them at all for that fact. Now this also adds an extra level of strategy to the overall gameplay because you will rarely be using the exact same plane in every stage. Some stages with fewer airports of each color will be better suited to slower moving but higher volume planes, while stages with more airports of each color will be better suited to faster moving, lower volume planes that give you more options. Also, towards the midpoint of the game, it'll give you a reason to grind out because ultimately the last section of planes is definitely better suited to all stages than the first section and at one point you just might have to grind out a few levels before attempting some of the harder stages to get some of the better planes. Now the second thing they've done to add a lot of playability to this game is they've added a ton of variety of different levels. 
and also a ton of levels of varying difficulties. So if you prefer to play easier levels, you still have a ton of options. And if you want to go to hardcore, really difficult levels, well, right away, starting at the second island, you'll start unlocking a harder section of the game. Now, these levels aren't only about airport placement and different colors and whatnot. There is also different obstacles within stages. Some are environmental like tornadoes and lightning storms, while others are simply putting mountain regions in the stage, meaning that you basically have to draw your flight path around those mountains. You'll even come across stages that eventually have what are called air currents that basically will flip directions mid gameplay, forcing you to redraw some of your flight paths because if your plane is flying against an air current, it'll start moving much slower, while if it's flying with the air current, it will move at almost double its regular speed. Once again, these are some really nice options to add a depth of gameplay to an overall simple design. And lastly, and probably the option that I found most interesting about this game, is they've made a multiplayer competitive mode, where basically up to four players will be able to fly on the same screen having to fly their different flight paths and land their planes while not hitting the competitor's planes, and even going so far as to giving you environmental power-ups that will allow you to throw things like tornado and lightning storms at your competitors. And I do really think that the long-term viability of this game for a lot of people will be around that multiplayer mode and whether family members and friends will really get into competing together. And I really like seeing a game designed allowing you to play even with two players with just a simple switch and a set of joy cons because ultimately for the motion controls you only need one joy con so with your basic switch setup you can already play two players together so we've gone over multiple positive game features that this game has with only slight drawbacks to it but i do think that overall they've added quite a nice dimension of polish to this game to really bring it up to the level of a nintendo switch release and ultimately this game plays very well whether you're playing it in handheld, in tabletop mode, or even in dock mode. And I do think that the biggest hurdle that this game is going to have is actually not around its design, but rather its release price. The developers are asking for $15 for this game. And the issue is, is that a lot of people are going to be comparing this game to some free mobile games out there. And I do find that $15 is a little bit steep because of that comparison. If this game was being sold at a sub $10 price point, I think it would be an easier sell to a lot of people. And although the basic gameplay loop is quite addictive and fun and will have you coming back on a regular basis, I really do feel that the only people who will feel really good with the $15 sale price on this game will be people who will be playing in co-op competitive mode, which is where this game shines the most. So now let's move on to the official verdict on this game. And as usual, if this is the first review of mine that you're watching, we do not give a numerical score. I give an overall statement on whether I think it's worthwhile purchasing this game or not. If you want to see what all those different statements are, you can look down below in the description of the video. They're all down there. And I'm going to be giving Fly Together on the Nintendo Switch a solid game. Ultimately, it adds a nice level of polish and depth to a rather simple concept that used to be present only on mobile platforms. Someone watching this review and really into the real-time puzzle dynamics of this game will be very satisfied with what they get and will have hours upon hours of gameplay before you fully play through all the content here. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have people to play with, the competitive co-op mode is really tons and tons of fun. The only thing holding it back, in my opinion, is that price point that unfortunately will have a hard time convincing a lot of people to drop $15 on a mobile concept game. This is a game I highly recommend you keep an eye on if it appears in one of my sales videos because at a sales point of 30 to 50% off or more, I would say that this game all of a sudden becomes a definite pickup in my opinion, especially if you're looking for a new party game. But now that's pretty much it for my review of Fly Together on the Nintendo Switch. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you did like this content, the best way to support the channel is to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.